ابتدایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین گشت سردار آسمون به توی دروازه سردار آسمون گل به نام آسمون به برای ایران بزنه کریم ازداری فرد Welcome back to another episode of Gol Bazan podcast. I'm the host for this uh, edition, uh, Samson Tamajani here, editor of Gol Bazan. Along with me is uh, one of uh, our experts on all things in and out of Iranian football, Erfan Hosseini. Erfan, what's up, mate? Hello, Samson, uh, and hello, everyone who's uh, listening. Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to once again be back on another episode. And yeah, a lot has happened, so let's get underway. Yeah, a lot has happened. Um, a lot of maybe underwhelming things, which probably explains why there's only two of us today. A lot of maybe some of the uh, underwhelming results from Team Lee making some of our members want to wear less and go out more, as I said the other day. A lot of our guys taking vacation weren't uh, able to join us today. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, definitely a lot to get to. Um, maybe it, it, it was a weekend or an international break that left us wanting more as Iranian fans. Iranian fans have high standards, and they deserve to have high standards. They got uh, wrestlers. They got weightlifters that are winning gold medals left and right every time there's a world championship, every time there's an Olympics. You ask yourself, why can't our national pastime of of football uh, be doing the same. I saw a joke uh, said the other day on Twitter of of Iranian uh, wrestling infrastructure shows what Iran truly can be, and then the footballing infrastructure shows uh, what Iran currently is like for so many people, and I think that's a great way to put it. But to uh, bring us up to date on the last two matches that happened over the international break, Iran hosted Kyrgyzstan away from Azadi Stadium, but still on home turf, obviously. Uh, but turf is maybe a nice way of, of listing the grass that they were playing on. Uh, a pair of 1-0 victories, beating uh, Kyrgyz Republic 1-0, and then going to the uh, land of Erfan Hosseini and, <laughs> and getting a 1-0 <laughs> victory over UAE. And Erfan, you were there. You made some fantastic content for us. We have it right now on YouTube, on uh, Instagram, uh, on your social medias. For those who don't don't yet follow Airfon, well, we have it on Goldbiz on social media. Airfon, uh, bring us up to speed. Uh, what what all were you doing? You you had a, a lot of cool content. You talked to some different people. Tell us about that. Yeah, and uh, the game took place uh, at the Hazab bin Zayed Stadium, not in my home city of Dubai, but in Al Ain. So it was about a one hour drive. I went there with a couple of friends and uh, it was nice to see all the Iranian fans because, you know, the Iranian diaspora here, there, there's a ton, there's tons of Iranians here. Um, and uh, yeah, the tickets were sold out in less than an hour. So it was expected to be a packed out game, especially for the Iranians. And uh, the Iranians were actually uh, sitting in the UAE side as well. That's that's how many Iranians there were. And uh, the, the you could just feel that it felt like a home game, game for Iran, to be honest. Because the UA fans were kind of silent. It was just Iranians the whole time out. And uh, yeah, it was nice me- meeting uh, some of you Gold Bazan fans there as well. Uh, Matteo, uh, he came all the way from uh, England to watch the game. He's a fan of Gold Bazan. He was very happy to see me as well as Arshia, uh, who, who, who lives in uh, Dubai. But uh, yeah, he listens to our podcast as well. Uh, so shout out to them. Uh, thanks for coming up to, to me and saying hi. It made me very happy. And uh, yeah, on the game itself, um, the UAE had uh, a lot of possession throughout the game, uh, but failed to really create any chances. Uh, and, um, you know, I was a bit surprised because they worked off the counter in their previous game against Qatar and it worked. They beat them 3-1 away. Uh, but against Iran, they just couldn't hack it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I criticize our team when it's due, but I also give my props when it's due. Our defense was very good uh, against the UAE. Um, they were almost perfect, to be honest, uh, without any mistakes at all. 
Yeah, it was an improvement, uh, and we'll get into this later with our uh, individual game breakdown. But there, there is definitely an improvement uh, on the defensive side of things. Uh, you just watching the highlights against uh, Kyrgyzstan, you're thinking, "Wow, man, it's Kyrgyzstan! They're playing like one of the best teams in Asia." But no, we really just made them look that way, giving them wide open headers, uh, being caught completely dead on a counterattack, and being very lucky that we did not. Uh, enter UAE with only one point in the group because Skidgerson should have tied it. They absolutely should have. Um, but you, yeah, Erfan, you talked about all the people you got to meet. That was really, really awesome. It was a great atmosphere. It looked like, I mean, just watching on TV, I was hearing all the uh, chants from the Iranian fans, men and women. By the way, side note, uh, Erfan, what is the latest on Azadi State? Yeah, both, both Team Melli and... Uh... The Tehran club, the Sagan Paris Police, uh, are hosting somewhere else currently. Um, and uh, uh, the latest news is that it's going to be ready by the end of fall. So you would say maybe around November, but uh, you never know with these promises and what these officials say, man. I mean, they said that it would be ready in time for the uh, for the club's first um, AFC Champions League elite games, but as we can see now, Estelal have to host in Shahra Quds as well as Paris Police. So there's no signs of Azadi as of now, and um, I would I would take anything uh, that these officials say with a pinch of salt because you never know. I I can't I can't promise you. I can't tell you when it's going to be back or when it's going to be ready. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that, mate. Um, as for the games, uh, last Thursday we saw Iran host Kyrgyzstan, uh, which in, in every game in their head to head record, Iran has won handily. At the airphone, I think you said it was 2016 that, that uh, Iran won 6 uh, 0 yes. back when Kar- Karosh was uh, the head coach. Uh, and this time, you know, the chances created made it look like it probably should have been four or five, but also on the other end, it should have been one or two goals even for uh Kyrgyzstan we there were just huge holes huge holes uh allowing for a counterattack and then on the other end especially the second half and, and this is a little bit of my complaint with Galinoy we don't see big adjustments save for one or two very notable games in his tenure as Iran manager if what we see in the first half we pretty much see in the second half there has been a lack of tactical change, a lack of personnel change that really make any impact. Um, we see that with uh, just the overall production in the attacking third, and then just the laziness we see with center midfielders. Uh, I saw a lot of that, just huge gaps between the back line or the center mids uh, and then to the attackers or when we send – uh, a long ball that finds a man that's wide open. We don't know what to do in the attacking third. There are several times in which Tarmi, Gaidi, with Gorizade, we saw that. They just were like, well, we're all good. Who, who's going to make a move? Or And they go for the one-twos, especially inside the box, but the final touch isn't there. Or just the first touch to begin with is not there. We saw that from Tarmi. We saw that from uh, Gorizade sometimes. Although, again, defenders of, of these uh, players who love them might say, oh, it's the terrible field. It is. But to what extent can you think back and, and just ask yourself, what were these guys doing in the national camp? Erfan, what, what did you make of that? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, uh, you're given a few days uh, before the game to train for a reason. You're given, uh, you're allowed to, uh, to train at, at the stadium the night before the game for a reason. It's to get used to these conditions. And uh, Iran did train for uh, two days before the game, but both of the days they trained at the Fulal Shah Stadium. So it was the exact same pitch. And yes, I agree, the pitch was very, very bad. It was embarrassing even to say, but um, you're still a professional player. These are all professional players playing um, all all around the world or all around Europe and uh, the Gulf. But uh, yeah, uh, like you you mentioned, uh, them passing to each other and then messing it up on the final touches. Um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, there, there was an instance in the first half uh, where um, there, were, there were some very beautiful uh, balls played. And then at the end, I think Polizade messed up the last shot. 
and uh, it, it, it wasn't the only time this happened. This happened several times throughout the game, and uh, we were lucky that Kyrgyzstan didn't uh, didn't use these uh, misses to uh, maybe get a point out of the game. So maybe we got lucky this time, but I don't think this will happen every game. So they should. It's very. It's something they should improve on. How about Kojo, man? The guy from from Kyrgyzstan. From Ghana. He's, yeah, he, he, well, yeah, he's a from... Ghana player. <laughs> <laughs> you, th- you think they're not going to be hyping him up for the return leg in Kyrgyzstan? I mean, that's going to be the, the biggest game in that country's history, man, you know? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, Kyrgyzstan made the third round for the first time ever. So they're kind of even happy to be in this position, but they're going to – they have nothing to lose. So they're going to attack as much as they can, be as entertaining as they can. And last time I checked, uh, there are better strikers than him in our group. And they play for Uzbekistan, who Iran's going to have to play next. Uh, but that's enough of, of, of that game. We don't need to dwell too much on that. Uh, the UAE game was an improvement, but it was not an improvement in terms of goal score. And that is ultimately what matters. That is ultimately what gets you to the World Cup. And this is the easiest World Cup to get to, especially with the level of points, especially with what's going on in the rest of the group. And Iran have two goals to show for it. Two wins, two goals against not the best competition. We were worried that, hey, you know, what if this is a, a lot tougher group? You know, it, will Ghanoui be ready for someone like uh, Japan or Korea, Saudi Arabia? He got, we got kind of a break with this. And yet, two wins, but two goals. So that being said... Erfan, you mentioned that UAE was able to get a lot of possession against Iran. Uh, it, did that? How much of that, in your observation, played to uh, the design from Godoy, expecting that, waiting for UAE to, to lose the ball, make a mistake, and how much was maybe uh, the lack of chemistry? I think this, I think this was a part of Godoy's game plan, to be honest, to wait for UAE to, to take the ball, to have possession and uh, maybe play a bit through our midfield. Uh, but when we get the ball, we can attack and uh, counter them. And it it kind of worked, to be honest. We had the chances. Uh, we had lots of chances, actually. And uh, even the goal that uh, we scored uh, from Mehdi Qaidi, it came exactly from that. It was uh, it was a UAE. They had possession. And then Qaidi went for a very strong, uh, not a push, but just a body no, on the fantastic. UAE defender. Fantastic use of physicality. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that 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 is the definition of using effort in the face of maybe a guy who's twice your size. That guy outweighed him, but easily by like what fifteen kilograms. Exactly. You don't you don't usually say that for Kaidi, but he uses his physicality in an amazing way, and it's kind of ironic because he plays in the UAE as well. Uh, So yeah, and we saw after he scored, he he kind of did apologize. As the UAE fans, uh, so a, a bit of respect there between um, him and the fans. And they, I, I've seen some tweets from, yeah. No, no, I was saying, I was saying, I, I think maybe he was thinking, sorry, yeah, yeah, as you're right, I shouldn't even be playing here. I should have been playing in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully he does uh, get the move. He's a brilliant player. But yeah, I, I saw after the game, uh, many Emir- Emirati fans uh, liked what he did and um, you know liked uh, the sign of respect he showed. Um, but yeah, I think that this was Kalinoi's game plan to let UAE have the ball, but they couldn't really attack. They couldn't really get past our midfield, to be honest. Maybe they went a bit to the wings, they got some corners, but there wasn't any proper chance the entire game. And uh, yeah, I'll give props to him for that. But uh, the, the goal scoring chances we had, man, we have to be doing better, especially when you have a one goal advantage. And this time, there's no excuse for the pitch as well. Uh, so. Yeah, Taremi had the two great chances. Osmoon had uh, two great chances, um, and yeah, we, we had we could have easily won this game too. three or four. No, yeah, Goal yeah, Zade exactly. Did too. He, when right, he came right. on, he did have a chance as well. So yeah, lots of chances, and we should definitely improve on our finishing. Well, that leads me to ask uh, what, and we saw Iran stars come in. You know, we, we would have liked to have seen Syed Manesh, which which I think is a disgrace that he didn't get in at all. He's play, been playing a lot better in Belgium. He was called up to the camp, and he doesn't get used. He hasn't been able to play for the national team. He hasn't stepped foot on the field of a national team game in how long? Was it 
two years more. It's it, it that it's been a I, while. I, yeah, at, at least two, more than two years because going into the 2022 World Cup, he was still too injured to play. Uh, so that that's very disappointing to see. But nonetheless, Iran did have its stars: Gulizade, Jahan Bach, who had a great header that resulted in a great save from uh, Emirati Kuper. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tarami had his fair share of chances, as he always does, as you expect from someone who's pretty much at the top of his game in the top of Europe. Uh, Osmoon, who, hey, now he's playing in UAE. If anyone's going to be playing better than what he has been, it's him. Um, but we didn't see that. How disappointing was that to see uh, the superior class of, of the Iranian attackers only result in one goal? Yeah, I mean, on Asmun, I, I don't know what to say on him. I mean, he's been he's been good in the UAE league, but come on, it's the UAE league. Uh, but then I but then again for the national team, he's basically playing against the UAE league all stars team, if that makes sense. So you'd be expecting him to uh, to be doing well. And man, he had his chances. I, I don't know I don't know how he didn't score though, especially that one v one towards the end. Uh, so I'm very very disappointed in Asmun. Uh, not only just the move, but his performance in this camp as well. Um, and then, um, I mean, to be to be fair to him, he had, yeah, he gave one very good pass uh, to Taremi for his chance. But other than that, disappointing performance from him. Um, and then from Taremi, I mean, it's it's not like Taremi did anything bad apart from that one miss. But uh, it's just we expect more from him as our as our star player. Well, he, he did have some bad touches. Some of his first touches seemed like he was almost distracted. He he was better in in that bad pitch in full out chair. So maybe we should play him in, in bad pitches only. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Mehdi, Mehdi, we expect a lot more from him. And uh, Jahan Bakhsh, dare I say, was our best player from our our uh, front three. You could say Jahan Bakhsh, Taremi, Azma. I think Jahan Bakhsh was our best player. Uh, this game, yeah, he, he had that good header, uh, which Khaled is a saved, and um, he he had uh, some good dribbling as well. But yeah, I think he, he was our best player. Yeah, the the, the two free agents, Jahan Baksh and Golus, uh, pl- played a lot, right? Uh, we haven't talked about Saman yet. How do we how do we feel that uh, that he was was did he play like he was a free agent? Um. He played better than some of our players with clubs, so I'll give him that. Uh, but um, he was still at, at a good level, but he wasn't at at the top level. Like uh, like for example, the game against UAE in the Asian Cup, he was much better there. Um, he so you can you can kind of tell uh, that compared uh, to his games previously that uh, he hasn't played for a bit. I mean, you can see the glimpses of the of, of the abilities that he has, but uh, yeah, he's still, he's not fully up to his game. I cannot help but think what kind of creativity spark would have come from these matches if we had a guy like Hosseini Jad, Zahidi, Sayed Manesh, who was actually in the squad, or... Sarfizan. A... Yeah, yeah, he's been playing well. He just scored twice on uh, Friday. Uh, or uh, or the likes of a Z- Zahir al-Islam, who we interviewed... Uh, a few months ago, and a lot, a lot of quotes to take from that interview that Arya and I did with Kaveh Zahir al Islam uh, still applies very much to today because he has not received a formal communication, a formal invite at all uh, to uh, Iran. I, I believe it was he, he was in contact a little bit with the U.S. and I, I mean, gosh, he, he got a dual national playing well in Belgium, and we saw how. God awful the U.S. was this international break. Who's to say Mauricio Pochettino isn't going to call him up? We don't know yet. <laughs> you know, you know, he <laughs> talked out his favorite Iranian dishes with us as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, to sum up this international break, Erfan, I want to try to go with some player grades. You know, some grades with some select players. Feel free to to list any players that I don't. Um, first off, Baron Vaughn uh, played the full 180 minutes. Uh, of both games. Uh, what kind of grade would we give him? He almost got caught off guard against Kyrgyzstan, but overall, what do you think from uh, the goalie? No, no, overall, you know, I, I think he had a perfect camp uh, bar that one. Uh, 
not a mistake he could say versus Vegas, and I, I'd give him a 9 out of 10. He, he was good, and he proved me, and I think some other doubters are strong as well. Not much else to say about him. He made the saves when he needed to. Uh, I'd give him an A, um, which might be the best of the whole team. Um, any notable defenders? Uh, gosh, we... we Shoujo, we, we could we, say, maybe. Yeah, we, we see a lot of him, don't we? Uh, I, I would have yeah. given him... He played the same as I always see of him, though. I, I'd give him a. I, I've all. I'm always tough on him, but I, I'll give him a good C plus. I'd give him a good B, to be honest. He, he was amazing versus the UAE. I mean, maybe maybe I was at the stadium and so I, I could say it better. I could see it better, but yeah, he was a tank that game. But against Kyrgyzstan, you know, a bit questionable. Why? So maybe a B minus. Still starting. He's still starting the beginning of the last round of these qualifiers. <laughs> When you're two years away, two years, he'll be, what, 36? Yeah, 36. We, we, no, we had a defender uh, named Jalal, uh, Jalal Hosseini who played well into his late 30s, uh, or at least in the club. Uh, I think his last national team game, he was, what, 35 maybe? I mean, he, he was just rock solid. He provided good stability and maturity. <laughs> when you think of Shoja, you don't think maturity, do we? <laughs> Uh, you don't think stability, do you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about the wingers? What grades would you give uh, our wingers? We had a we had a couple play. Milad Mohammadi, um, and who, who who was it again? Milad it and uh, Arya Yusuf. You played in the first yeah. game, and then it was hard done in the second game. Yeah. What what grades uh, for them? Uh, well, Milad was actually good. I I'd give him a I'd give him a solid B, and then uh, for Arya Yusuf and Hardani, I think. I'd give them both a C plus or a B minus around that area. Uh, I think Hadani was just better, starting with than Arya Yusuf. He had a good performance against the UAE. Holding mids, uh, we saw a couple uh, guys who played more toward the back. I think Rodus was kind of playing more of that role. Uh, it was uh, uh, remind me obviously Ezatullah. Ezatullah, he played. Uh, yeah, he played. And then Qurban, he started the first game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 What, what did uh, we think of them? Because our transition game was not as up to a lot of our standards. Um, for Qutus, maybe a C, I think, would be fair on him. And then uh, for Ezatullah, he started the UA game only. And to be fair, he was, he was great in that game. So I'd give him a B plus. And then for Qurbani, I, I think also... Um, uh, yeah, similar rating to both, so I'd give him a C. Attacking mids, uh, I mean, or slash uh, mids, uh, Jahan Baksh, uh, Gaidi, um, Golizade, Golizade, obviously. Uh, what about what about those guys? <laughs> Mogan um... Lu, our favorite stuff. <laughs> uh, for Golizade, I think a B plus is fair for Jahan Baksh. Uh, also, around yeah, B would be good, and Kaidi and A minus. Kaidi was played very well these two games. All right, uh, and Tarami and Azmun. Uh, Tarami uh, B plus and Azmun an F. <laughs> I failed him. No, I I don't I don't think you get above for them as good as they are. I don't think you get above a B plus when you score one goal each game. I, I just don't. You have to set the tone as the two biggest stars of Iranian attacking reputation. You score two goals against Kyrgyzstan at home and UAE that I, I, I don't know. I, I, now, UAE, they, they beat Qatar the first game, right? So, uh, so they they were riding high on some good momentum. That that's a signature win for them to be able to say we beat Qatar three one three one right. Uh, and and I'll be honest to be to be honest before the game against UAE I, I didn't have much expectations because they were coming off a very good game against the Qatar and they, they had a lot of fans for the first time in a long time attending. So I thought maybe they would get a draw or even with our performance against Kyrgyzstan I thought maybe they could even win but. Yeah, thankfully, we, we did manage to pull off that one. Okay, and last but not least, the grade of the man in charge uh, for now, Amir al uh, The subs against Kyrgyzstan, and by the way, there's one thing to say about the squad he called up, but we talked about that in the, in the, in the episode before this. 
uh, but the subs that we saw uh, against Kyrgyzstan uh, was, I believe it was uh, uh, Har uh, Hardani came on for Yusefi, Ezzetolahi came on for Goldus, Torabi came on for Gaidi. Torabi provided, you know, a, a more structured uh, attack, I thought, better passing. Um, Jahan Baksh came on for Golizade, Morgan Lu came on for Azmoon, and then against UAE, he had uh, wrong team. Uh, he had, uh, but by the way, f four yellows against UAE. That drove me mad. Kenani, Mohammadi, uh, Godou. That Mohammadi one was very dumb towards that. What, is it in the 96th minute? What are you, yeah. what are you wasting time he, he, for? He was, do, I mean, it, have, was, it was a 19, 19, it was the 100th minute, actually. It was like, yeah, you, it, you got, yeah. Do you have Nunez uh, threatening to attack? Do you have. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sadio Mane, uh, their best striker isn't even Emirati, man. <laughs> what are you wasting time for? It's yeah, madness. A very amateur mistake from Mama there because you know, two yellow cards and you're suspended for the next game, so and that also it reflects cost us. On, it also reflects on the coaching because you talk about discipline, you talk about what kind of mentality, how you approach these scenarios when you're playing against these uh, Middle Eastern countries. Uh, okay, Osmoon came on for a gold deuce. Uh, Said Mohamed Karimi came on for Tarami, and Golizade came on for uh, Gaedi, and Gorbani came on for Ezutahi. So four subs there. So judging from that, judging from how you know, as the manager manages these these games, what grade would you give Galanoi these two? Um, the Kyrgyzstan game, I don't want to talk about too much, but uh, for the, for the UAE subs. Uh, he made three subs. I, I, I don't really count Mohamed Karimi because that was just a waste a bit of time at the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, I think those three subs were fair, but I would have really loved to see Sayad Manish, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, so a bit unfortunate on that. But overall, um, I, I can't give him too low because we, we did win both the games at the end, but I can't give him too high either. So I think maybe a C plus would be fair. No, nah, I'll go C minus. Really, <laughs> I I don't I don't care that I, I don't. We've already talked about it. There's no need to explain. We already we already know what's going on and and just what we saw here. Two goals, two wins. I don't care about the other team. You know, the, every, after every World Cup cycle, you have to think to yourself as a federation, as a national team, how can you level up? It, certain players have leveled up. Certain players have leveled down. Uh, scouting wise, raising the youth players. You have to level up. You have to raise the stakes for yourself. We've seen so many things go down under Valinoy, except for one signature win in the Asian Cup, which is, boy, <laughs> that's carrying a whole lot of weight when it comes to the rhetoric uh, with Valinoy. Um, But that's for another time. But uh, elsewhere in Group A, we saw a lot of surprises, actually. Uh, so Iran actually sits second because of their lack of putting balls in the nets against inferior opponents. Uh, two goals for, n n no goals against, but Uzbekistan has four goals for from their first two matches, beating North Korea 1-0 uh, and was it 3-2 against uh, yeah. Kyrgyzstan? Yeah, in that second game. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's let's not pretend that Uzbekistan's defense is is impenetrable now, despite them getting uh, two two wins. They allowed two goals against Kyrgyzstan. Maybe Kyrgyzstan worked off their momentum from almost going against Iran. Um, UAE sits in third. North Korea uh, in fourth. Qatar very disappointing, but you know it goes it, it goes to that conversation. Non Asian Cup Qatar is not the Qatar that we. Uh, you know, are impressed by North Korea were on 10 men for 70 minutes and yeah. they couldn't win. That was just insane to me. Yeah, so yeah. The, the level of play is not what we thought it would be from, from a couple of the, the, the top teams. Is that fair to say? What what other observations from this group have you made so far, Irfan? Um, well, first of all, on Uzbekistan, uh, their PGPL players have actually been playing really well. I mean, 
Two of their four goals were scored by PGPO players. Masharipov scored against their only goal against North Korea. And he plays for Aslaklal. Osman Uronov scored the winner against Kyrgyzstan. A brilliant goal that was by the very, very good uh, footwork from him. And uh, not only the attacking side, I mean, on the defending side, Uzbekistan starting goalkeeper plays for Fula Yusupov. He saved the penalty against North Korea. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's nice to see these PGPO players doing well for their own national teams. But um, I wish they would do the same for uh, our own national team as well. Um, and then on the other team, yeah, Qatar, like you mentioned, uh, just not as expected. I mean, one point from... Uh, you could say two of their easiest games in this group. I mean, North Korea and Kyrgyzstan are uh, the, the pot five and six teams here. So you'd expect them to do well, but um, their job became much more difficult now. And uh, I'm going to give my props to North Korea because um, they played above expectations. They deserved at least a point against Uzbekistan and uh, played amazingly against against Qatar, even though the field was very... Um, it was like more like water polo than football, but still, um, they they got uh, at their point. So big up to them. And and by the way, when when Iran has to travel uh, for the away game against North Korea, where is that going to be played? Or are all of North? It's going to be playing games? in Laos. Yes. All, all, all of their home are games Laos. are. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I mean that that's never ideal, really. <laughs> um, all right, moving on then. Uh, Erfan, you put out a tweet uh, not long ago about uh, expected rankings, I believe, uh, for Iran. Uh, when, when do those rankings come out, and what is that going to look like? They come on, on, I believe, the 19th of September, and uh, Iran went up one spot uh, to 19th on the world, and it's the first time in 18 years uh, that we go uh, below the ranking of 20. So it's been a while since, since we've been down here. Uh, so yeah, Iran are expected to go up to 19th. And uh, Japan are expected to go up to 16th. Well, I guess that settles it. Uh, Amir Galanoui, best coach in 18 years then. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Better than Kairush. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, that uh, Iran's next uh, two matches uh, against Uzbekistan on October 10th, and then five days later on Tuesday, October 15th, home against Qatar. And when I say home, not all houses make a home. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Where, where I, is I that game going to be? Um, officially, it's the Dazadi Stadium, but I doubt it. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a bold statement here. Um, I prefer that in, in a situation like this, uh, where we have no proper fields, you know, we have no uh, proper infrastructure. It's kind of sad. I think it's better for us to maybe take uh, for the AFC to take our hosting rights and uh, we can host a game, for example, where in Dubai or Abu Dhabi, where there's there's so many Iranians. I mean, the games are going to be filled up. It's going to be like a home game and the grass is actually proper there. Uh, so m- maybe they should do this so the Federation can learn a lesson because we, as we all know, until something happens, nothing will change. Um, so, yeah, but um, according to the latest news, they're working on the Food al Stadium Stadium for, for the next game. So, I don't know, man. It's just, it's all weird. I don't know how the Iranian Federation can negotiate this. I don't know if it's possible. Um, but I do know that a country like Mexico absolutely hates playing friendlies or home games in Mexico. Why? Because when they play in the United States, which has tens of millions of Mexicans, they make so much more money. And it's frankly, more of a of an advantage, really, in terms of atmosphere. I, I wonder what the potential is for Iran to do the same thing or would it instead be a matter of stubbornness, not wanting to, to do that? Because there are certain standards in international football when it comes to uh, pitch conditions and field conditions. What we have seen with PGPL clubs potentially hosting in the Asian Champions League, and then obviously what we saw last week with Iran. It's, I mean, this is putting it really oversimplified, but it's not good enough, man. It's not good enough. It's it's very worrisome. What ha- what what do, what do you think the Inter bosses are going to say uh, when Tarami gets a knock playing on on a pitch that's half dead? What do you, what do you think those millionaires in charge of Inter Milan are going to think? I, I mean, are, are they even paying attention? Do they know what Tarami was, was playing 
with, with the last game? Because that's a huge concern. It's a huge liability. It's unacceptable. It, it's th- th- And this is not a bold statement I'm making. We all know it. It's it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science to grow d- a decent grass and put decent roots in place. You know, this isn't like in the U.S. when they're criticizing them putting a, a, a temporary pitch in two days before the game. These are football stadiums, right? Um Anyway, I'll, I'll try to digress on that. But um, moving on then to some of the uh, player news and, and uh, call-ups, potential call-ups for the next international window. Who is playing really well right now that you think absolutely needs to be at least considered, Erfan, that was not called up already? Um, well, I'll get the, I'll get the more... Uh, I'll get these two names out of the way. Both Saeed Sahar Khizan and uh, Jawad Hossein Najad. I think they absolutely must be in the next squad. They should have been in this squad, but they must be in the next one. Uh, maybe, okay, this 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 squad, I know you can use the excuse of, oh, it was the beginning of the season, but next time out, there's no excuses. Both of them have to be there. Uh, they've been playing amazingly over in their uh, new clubs. Um, and then... Um, also, uh, I, I would say maybe Ahmad Nurullah. Yeah, I know he's been out for the, for the national team side for a while because uh, they had that issue with Kalinoy. But Kalinoy said uh, yesterday actually that if he if he's willing to apologize, then uh, he, he will he will consider calling him back up. So I hope that happens because we're struggling a bit in the midfield right now. So maybe a player like him who's on form uh, would help us a lot. And then uh, from uh, the PGPL, I really want to see a Tandy pool called up. I mean, we saw him at the U17 World Cup, at U17 Asian Cup. Fantastic player. I mean, at the age of 18, he's the PGPL top scorer currently. He's been playing amazing for Malavon. Uh, some great finishes. Um, he even won a penalty against Sepan the other day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I want to see these players called up for the next camp. So I, I, I haven't gotten the chance to watch a lot of PGPL, although you guys were talking on Twitter about that website that you use to, to watch those games. Yes. Uh, what was Hunter. it called again? Um, yeah. It shows all the games. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a really great resource. Uh, if you want to be really smart like Airfon, there you go. There's your researching tool right there. <laughs> um, but, uh, gosh, I, you have to call up Zahir Leslam. At least get him in the camp. It, it It's just like, why, why do I feel like that has to be like a – like a uh, like my on my wish list for Naruz, you know, just just go ahead and do it. What do you what have you got to lose? That's my question. Yeah. He's perfect in Farsi, has his passport. Been to Iran several times, yeah, and there's no excuse to be honest. I I don't know what they're waiting for. I I don't understand it. Um, uh, as far as uh, PGPL itself and uh, the Asian Champions League. Uh, a lot of news, a lot of upcoming notable games to mention, Erfan. Uh, take me through some of the main storylines happening right now in the Persian Gulf Pro League. Um, so the, we've seen four games of the Persian Gulf Pro League played so far. Uh, Sepahan with a perfect start, four games, four wins. Um, a very, very good start from them. I think this is one of their best starts uh, in the league history. And... Uh, Estaglal and Persepolis, they've only played three games because uh, they have they have the AFC Champions League elite fixture coming up. Uh, Persepolis sits sixth and Estaglal sits tenth. Both these teams only one win from their first three games. So maybe a bit of a disappointing start uh, for uh, their fans. But I do want to mention um, how good of a start Malavan has been having. Uh, I mentioned Gandipur. Um, but they've also had uh, another player move there. Omid Nur Afghan is playing there now. Uh, he's completing his military service. Um, but other than that, Malavan have been uh, doing well because they've, they've actually been playing young players, you know, unlike some of the other PGPO clubs. And they have they have a good coach in Mazi Arzari. He's a decent coach who's willing to take risks, who's willing to play these younger players. And it's been paying off so far. They sit third in the league uh, with two wins and uh, just one loss. Uh, and then over in the AFC, uh, AFC competitions, uh, Iran have four clubs uh, competing in Asia, two in the ACL Elite and two in the second tier uh, competition. Estelal and Persepolis both kick off their campaigns 
um, in the coming week. I think I will play against Al Gharraf of Qatar uh, in the Shahrawat Stadium in Tehran. And Al Gharraf not in the best of form. Uh, they drew one one in their last game, and uh, they're missing uh, Yasin Brahimi, who's one of their uh, star players. Although they do have uh, Joselu, who played for Real Madrid last season, he is with the squad. Um, and then Paris Police have to travel away to Jeddah. Uh, they actually already have traveled. They'll play against Al Ahli. It was many, many stars. I mean, you know, you have Roberto Firmino, uh, Frank Kessie, Edward Mendy, uh, Riyad Mahrez, and all these players who play for over there. So it's going to be a very difficult game, difficult away game for Paris for this. Um, so yeah, exciting uh, on that. And then over in the second tier, uh, Tractor uh, will play away to Al Wakra, another Qatari, te- Qatari team. And uh, Sepan will play away to Al Wahdat of Jordan. Um, two winnable games uh, for the Iranian side, I'd say, uh, especially considering the transfer window that they both had. By the way, uh, for those who are just maybe casual fans and don't check up uh, on PGPL and Asian uh, play every single weekend, we are going to see Ronaldo back in uh, Iran this year. Is that right? Yeah, and it's not going to be just once, but twice. Yeah, he's playing against both Estagal and Persepolis. And God, this is embarrassing, but he's probably going to be playing at that small uh, Shahrakot Stadium when he plays against Estagla. And it's embarrassing. I mean, going from all these big stadiums, you know, Santiago Bernabeu, the Camp Nou, uh, the Allianz Arena, and then you're going to be playing in that five, five K stadium theater. It's just Look, with let, horrible grass. I, I, I get it, but well, the grass, yes. But who's he playing in front of in Saudi Arabia? What's the average attendance of of his games in Saudi Arabia. They, yeah, they yeah. Game. I get 5, that. 000, I get, maybe 10,000? I get that, and I agree with that. But um, I meant most likely as in the stadium facilities. And, and Saudi, you don't have issues like that. But in Iran, you know, um, we've seen the issues. And I hope, hope that maybe there can be a miracle and the result is, is fixed in time uh, for when Ronaldo comes. But I doubt it because it, it'd be really nice to see 100,000 fans um, and yeah, I think it would be a good showing for us. Uh, and opposite of last time when he came and the grass was very bad. Yeah, uh, and and can only hope that this, the security is is good as as well because we we know from last time what kind of buzz that creates when you have Ronaldo. Yes. Speaking uh, of, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention this um, Mortaza Khaifi, who was um, who was a Malavan fan. I uh, was attending uh, the game between Sepahan and Fulacha, uh, Sepahan and Malavon at the Fulacha Stadium uh, a few days ago. And uh, unfortunately, uh, at the end of the first half, he got a heart attack. And uh, there was some miscommunication between the officials of the games. And he wasn't transported uh, to the hospital in time. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away. So a uh, condolences to him and uh, the entire Malavon team. Yeah, absolutely. That's the last thing you hope to ever see at a, at a football game. Uh, and I, 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 we don't know all the facts for sure yet. We do absolutely hope that it's not true that, that there are any uh, deficiencies with getting the proper care immediately um, before, during, and, and, and after. Absolutely. I mean, I mean the uh, match commissioner the, the way, has for, been for, banned, for, so... I'm not. I'm not sure. Really, yeah, he's been banned until uh, there's been a case. Yeah, because apparently he was at fault for not having the uh, medical, uh, the old ambulances there in time. Boy, never ceases to surprise me. Um, yeah. But by the way, w- w- uh, for, for again another casual fan question that that I have, if for someone who does not keep up with PGPL as much, uh, Arafan, and we have that. Def- Definitely gotten better at talking about PGPL since you joined us. Um, w- w- briefly explain that that whole kind of a uh, uh, opportunity that playing for Malavan presents when you got when you have to deal with a uh, uh, mandatory uh, uh, military duty. Uh, okay, yeah. So basically, there's uh, currently uh, three teams in the first division that offer these kind of services. Services you could say either they're owned uh by uh, the military or, or they have some uh, sort of connection and malabon for example they're the only team in the pgpl uh, they're directly connected to the iranian navy so uh, players who need to complete their mandatory military service which is uh, 12 months now uh, or just uh, one season uh, they can go to uh, malabon and do it uh, in the second division you have uh, Faj sepasi and niru zamini uh, who are um, 
who are owned by the military or um, have some sort of connection. Uh, so yeah, I think it's similar to the military club over in Korea that South Korea they have. There's, they have a club there as well uh, that uh, the South Korea soldiers can go to make sure that they stay in shape and uh, don't uh, fall behind on the footballing aspect. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, glad we got that uh, covered because I mean that that's something that that comes up a lot. Um, now uh, let's get an update on on the women's side of things, women's league and women's uh, Asian Champions League as well. Because as we mentioned before, this is the first year that they're able to have it at Asian Champions League, uh, and we do have uh, Iranian involvement in that. Yeah, uh, so on the women's league, uh, still hasn't started yet. It usually begins around uh, mid to late November. Um, the defending champions, Bam Khatun, obviously the favorites, like always. Uh, they also represented or are representing us in the Women's Champions League, the first edition this season. And uh, they started in the preliminary stage. Uh, they won both their games against Kichi of Hong Kong and uh, the Bhutanese champions. Uh, and they advanced to the group stage, uh, which will be taking place uh, over in Thailand. Um, they have a very difficult group. And I think it's nice that they even... Uh, made it to the stage. It's good experience for these players, these young players. Uh, obviously, Melika Mohammadi played for them a while ago. Uh, sad that she's not here with us today. Um, would be a great opportunity for players like her. Uh, but yeah, they're there in Group B with uh, Melbourne City of Australia, Kaya of Philippines, and the uh, College of Asian Squ Scholars, uh, who are also the hosts. And these games, the group stage games, will be played uh, across October. Uh, all of them will be held in Thailand. The group stage will be held from the 3rd of October, I believe, uh, to okay. the 12th of October. 6th of October to 12th of October. It'll be in a centralized format. We'll definitely, yeah, we'll definitely be providing updates of that uh, on social media through Golbizan and Erfan on your Twitter as well. You've been very active. You're, uh, it, I, I know it's, uh, Twitter is not uh, exactly everyone's favorite website now. I don't blame you, but uh, there is an account to follow. It's Golbizan and Erfan's account as well for, for providing very good insight as well. Uh, there's another thing happening, uh, another big event happening uh, really this coming week, and that is the Futsal World Cup in Uzbekistan actually gets to host it. And as always, Iran uh, is one of the favorites in it. Iran starts September 16th. So if you're listening to this uh, on Sunday or or uh Early Monday, you know, set your uh, set your recordings on TV because uh, Iran starts off against Venezuela. That is at eight thirty in the morning New York time, five thirty LA time. That is uh, two thirty in the afternoon Central European time, one PM uh, for England time, and so on. And we'll be providing updates and retweets on that as well. The second match. Uh, against Guatemala, it should be a lot more winnable. Um, that will be at the same time on the 19th of September, three days later, and then three days after that, playing against France. That game will be at 4 o'clock England time, 11 o'clock a.m. New York time, and what is that, uh, 5 o'clock Central European time. Uh, Erfan, what is some insight you can provide us on the futsal team? Because so many times when we follow them in these tournaments or the Futsal World Cup, they come so close but ultimately break our hearts. Yeah, I mean, futsal is massive across the country. It's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's, they're, they're, there's a reason that we're so good at it. I mean, uh, we're not good on the grass side, uh, grass aspect of things, but we are good on the playing in salon parts. Uh, there's futsal pitches in the smallest of villages across the country, uh, so it's very nice to see. Uh, but it, yeah, you can't uh, play, you can't play bad uh, on on the grass if there's no grass. There you go. Exactly. That, I mean, if you're if you're mad about the performance of of Team Italy, don't worry, because we got a great team that does not need grass to play. Exactly, and that's why we're so good at beach soccer as well, because none of these need grass. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we have a good squad uh, led by uh, Vahid Chamsai, obviously a futsal legend uh, for Iran. And um, we're currently ranked fourth in the futsal world rankings. Uh, so we're definitely one of the favorites for this uh, tournament. We played two friendlies in, uh, in Kazakhstan. Uh, we we lost the uh, four one in the first one and drew the second one 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 but it was more of a more of a test game, um so I I do I don't think we should worry much about that, 
Uh, but yeah, we have players like uh, Said Ahmad Abbasi, who was the top scorer uh, in the last Asian Cup. We had uh, Hossein Tayebi, uh, who had a very good stint um, in, um, in in Palma, in Spain, who, who, who won the UEFA Futsal Champions League uh, along with Ahmad Abbasi. Uh, we have Hassan Zadeh, who has 13 goals across uh, four or five Futsal World Cups, so a very experienced player. Um, and um, it's, it's it's an easy group for Iran, to be honest. We should be easily topping this group uh, with no problem. I mean, Venezuela, Guatemala, and, and France, uh, these aren't uh, your typical futsal nations. I mean, even last time out, we only uh, lost uh, to Argentina, and that was a very close game, a game as well. So, uh, yeah, we're expected to top this group. Hopefully we do. And um, I have high expectations for this team. So hopefully we do well. Definitely we'll be talking about that. Uh, as well. But yeah, on the men's side, Iran ranked number fourth behind Spain, Portugal, and Brazil. Uh, the hosts, Uzbekistan, are 11th. France is number 10. So that, that definitely will be the toughest uh, game in the group. And it's the last game uh, as well. Uh, Venezuela is next at number 21. Uh, so they're, they're, not, they're not any uh, you know, piece of cake game either. You know, you, you I think with a small court as well, you know, it, it's if you make two bad touches in a row, next thing you know, you're down two nil, you know, and you're having to come back uh, from that. So, I mean, you know, beach soccer, but it's all very different sports. So it, it's not really the same complexities, which might even be why Iran has done so well uh, historically. Um, and then Guatemala ranked number 40. So, uh, yeah, de- definitely uh, looking forward to that. At least in the U.S., uh, Telemundo uh, and Fox Sports uh, Plus, I think, will be carrying the games. I think some of the time it'll be on Fox Sports 2. Yeah, and uh, but we'll we'll be providing updates on that as well. On Iran, the games will be, for the Iran at least, games will be on IRIB3, um, as well as uh, on Bain Sports, if you're around the Persian Gulf countries or any of the Arab countries. Well, we got to end off the episode with some fun, Erfan. Uh, what what's a good prediction you want to give for the Futsal World Cup? Since this is the last episode we'll have until that. Ooh, I, I haven't looked through the brackets yet, so I'm not sure who we're playing. Uh, if we, but I think we will top our group. I think we will win the round of sixteen game, and I would say I'm a quarter final or a semi final exit. I think that's that's where we'll go. Well, that's what we've done in the past. Um, yeah, but I I need some optimism. So I'm gonna say they make the World Cup final, make the World Cup Ooh. final. Why not? Got nothing to Why lose. Not? We know that they can do it, and it's in Uzbekistan. I was, I was going to say this. Uh, yeah, all our group stage games are in Bukhara, and it's nice because that that city has a lot of Farsi speakers as well. So hopefully uh, the fans turn up and it feels like a hockey home game for us. Yeah, definitely gonna need good representation. Uh, there and uh, if anyone has any family or friends over there or if you yourself plan on going for a good little getaway in, in Uzbekistan yeah feel yeah feel free and re- represent and uh, send us some pictures on social media as well uh, as well as for any time you go to these games Airfond ran into a bunch of gold design friends uh, at the game at uh, UAE and that was awesome to see so uh, really appreciate the engagement that we get every time on gold design we all have the same goal. We all have the same desire uh, to see Team Italy succeed. Um, and uh, yeah, any final thoughts, Serafan, before we close it out? No, I just I'm looking forward uh, to the Futsal World Cup and uh, the coming uh, AFC Champions League games. Nothing else to add. Yeah, uh, er- we know Serafan will be posting all the updates we need uh, on uh, on his social media, and we'll be providing updates as well. For that, and we'll have another episode planned right before the October international break, or right before the October games against Uzbekistan. That's a big one, and then Qatar. Got got to find some separation for Group A against Uzbekistan for sure. Couldn't do it in the last round, two draws in a row. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see for that. Uh, that's gonna do it. Uh, until next time, feel free to like share subscribe on youtube itunes spotify wherever you get your podcast we, we, we'd like you more on, on youtube we definitely want to raise our our youtube uh level as well um all right well for airfon hosini i'm sam santana thanks again guys we'll see you for another episode of Gold Up.
name is Kavit Zahir Leslam, and I'm playing for St. Troyden in the Belgian Pro League. And you're listening to Gold Bazan Podcast.